Okay, now I'm going to show you another example of layer styles, and I'm just going to do something really quick here with this uh, Chimpy logo that I got. Um, so I'm going to go on the background layer, which is just a solid color right now. We could change it to whatever we want, and I'm going to double click it. And in the layer style, I'm just going to go ahead and create a pattern. Um, so I'll click my pattern, and I'll dig around and see what I got. I got this paper, so I'm just going to use this paper here. So right away, just adding a pattern to that layer sort of transforms this logo into, you know, it has a little more substance to it. Um, another thing I'm going to do is double click this guy. I'm going to do a gradient overlay. I'm going to do radial, reverse it, and then sort of create like a, a vignette around this guy. Now, right now it's localized to the space of this image. I'm going to turn off align with layer, and I'm going to bring this guy out and scale him up. So it's just sort of at the edges and um, not much on the inside. So I'm adjusting my gradient. So it's just dark in the corners and more light and more bright in the inside. And then I'm going to multiply this guy. And so you can kind of see it just gives a cool little bit of effect there. And uh, dial it in. So that's all I'm going to do with the background layer. And so here's my foreground layer, which is the Chimpy logo. I'm going to double click this guy and in here I am going to put an outline around it. So I'm just going to do a stroke in white and I'm going to dial it in a little bit so it's not so harsh. And then I'm going to create an inner glow. Now just because somebody says glow it doesn't mean it's just like a bright blooming thing. You could do a reverse glow and um, treat it as like a shadow or like an ambient occlusion or something to darken. So you could switch this to multiply. And I'm going to switch this color to black and change the size. So zooming in here, you can see that um, there's the inner glow. I'm going to add some jitter to it. add a little bit of noise to it and I'm going to dial it in so it's not so prominent and I'm just going to leave that there so before we were talking about this section here in advanced blending and the blend if gray red blue green now these are different color channels that depending on what is underneath your layer and what is on your layer you can sort of push and pull um, values and information through the two layers. Now the stops down here you have your darks, your lights on both sides. If you drag this you're going to see that it just disappears. If you drag the other side you're going to see that it just disappears. Now the cool thing is that the underlying layer when you drag the stop you'll start to pull in some of this information um, and pixel information from the layer underneath it. So when I drag that slow you can see that it's starting to to suck in some of the pixels. Now you can do this per channel and what we're going to try to do is um, just pull some of the texture from underneath into the Chimpy logo to make it seem like it's kind of printed on this, um, this paper or this um, sort of a treated leather or something. Um, so I'm gonna, what you can do is hold down Alt and you could split these stops. If you see in the middle, there's a little bit of, there's a line. That means you could split it in two. So holding down Alt, you could see you could divide it. And now there's finer control over the fading. So right now this um, brown is kind of burnt in, and I want it to absorb a little more of the color underneath. So I'm going to hold down Alt, and I'm going to drag this until I get a result that I'm kind of looking for. So maybe something like that. And on the opposite side, you could do the same, but since um, there's white and it's not really picking up any white from underneath, I'm going to go ahead and move down to the underlying layer. So here I'm going to split this. And you can see that the dark isn't doing anything because the underlying layer is, is mainly just the texture. So we're going to go over to this other side. Now if we just grab the stop here and pull it in, you can see it gets a lot of the texture and it's really kind of hard. So we'll split this one. And drag it in. 
and you can see that we're getting some finer control over pulling the um, the pixels that are underneath. Now we can also switch to different channels. Since this brown has kind of has red in it, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the red channel and do the same thing. If we pull this in, see we get a lot, but it's very hard, so we're going to split this and get in some more information. And switching back, it keeps the same um, settings that you had, but you can see now that um, we have some grain that is underneath the layer, and all we really did is create a layer style. We didn't make a mask, we didn't bring in any textures, we didn't use any brushes or anything like that to create a special look to it. But one thing to keep in mind is that these blending options, these are tied to everything and all the layer styles and the colors that you put on this layer. So if you start dialing other things and adding other colors, it's going to change this blend. So for example, if we go to a color overlay and we choose some color, most of it retains, but depending on the colors that you pick, if they're brighter or their value changes, you lose that information a bit. But that's an example of the blending options and kind of how they work. And you can use this with basically anything, um, except for just solid colors that are on top of each other, like black on white, or um, you know, like black on gray or white on gray. Like those scenarios don't really work because there really isn't any um, variation or dynamics between the pixels of the layers. So you need the RGB values and you need the pixels to have a lot of variance to sort of push and pull this. Um, and this seems a little strong to me still, so I'm going to pull it down just a little bit, but maybe I'll pull this one back just a little bit. But you can see that we kind of have this distressed look, and we created it from a layer style and not from um, creating masks or creating anything custom. But uh, that's another example.